Welcome to News Wrap Local. I'm your host, Justin Chapman. Thanks for being here. After providing a few brief updates on this month's local stories, we'll speak with our guest, Pasadena Mayor Victor Gordo. But before we get started, let's check out these Pasadena Media News Briefs. PUSD School Board President Dr. Elizabeth Pomeroy has announced that she will not seek re-election. First elected to the PUSD Board in 2008, Pomeroy also served as a board member of the Pasadena Historical Society, Pasadena Sister Cities Committee, and the Sierra Club, among other groups. She further served on the Recreation, Parks, and Library Commission. Pomeroy graduated from Stanford University and holds a PhD in English from UCLA. Over the years, she has taught at Pasadena City College, UCLA, UC Irvine, and California State University, Los Angeles. She served on the staff of the Huntington Library for 10 years and worked at the W.M. Keck Foundation in Los Angeles. Pomeroy has lived in Pasadena for more than 35 years. Her son and daughter attended PUSD school. The Pasadena community is mourning the passing of District 3 Council Member John J. Kennedy. A lifelong resident of Pasadena, Kennedy dedicated his life's work to public service. He was an alum of Blair High School and a student senator at USC, where Kennedy received dual degrees in international relations and economics. He also earned a degree from Howard University School of Law. Kennedy was first elected to serve as a Pasadena Council member in 2013. During his time on the council, Kennedy served on the Finance and Public Safety Committees and was one of three Pasadena representatives of the Burbank-Glendale-Pasadena Airport Authority. Kennedy was an advocate for the formation of Pasadena's Police Oversight Committee. Most recently, in June of this year, Kennedy was re-elected to the City Council for a third term, with nearly 60% of the vote. In a statement, Mayor Victor Gordo said, While we are all deeply saddened by the sudden loss of our friend and colleague, John Kennedy, we should always remember and celebrate his many accomplishments and contributions to our city and beyond. Residents and community leaders, including Assemblymember Chris Holden, former Mayor Rick Cole, Councilmember Tyron Hampton, and other members of the City Council came together to honor Kennedy at a vigil held at City Hall. Flags at all Pasadena City facilities will be lowered to half staff in tribute to Councilmember John J. Kennedy. The City of Pasadena broke ground on a new public swimming pool at Robinson Park Recreation Center. The new pool will feature zero entry access for those with disabilities, lanes for lap swimming, a new high efficiency heating system, a new deck with showers, and a perimeter wall around the facility. The swimming pool restoration is part of the bigger Robinson Park Recreation Center renovation project that began in February of last year. Overall, the project will include demolition and reconstruction of the multi-purpose room, administrative offices, kitchen, the open courtyard, recreation rooms, and a conference room. An earlier phase of the project involved a 2.5-acre expansion of the existing park and improvement to the site, including new soccer and baseball fields, installation of synthetic turf, construction of new restroom and storage facilities, new sports field lighting, site amenities, and parking lot. Estimates from the Department of Public Works say construction on the new pool should take about a year to complete. Before we begin, I'd just like to say on behalf of the entire NewsWrap local team that we offer our deepest condolences to the family and friends of Pasadena City Council Member John Kennedy, who passed away July 21st. John was a champion for Pasadena. He loved this community. He dedicated his life to making it a better place. He leaves behind an important legacy, including the establishment of civilian oversight of the police department and a sister city relationship on the continent of Africa. 
and he will be sorely missed by our community. Rest in peace, Councilman Kennedy. A public service will be held from 5 to 6.30 p.m. on Friday, September 30th in front of City Hall. A reception will follow from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Let's turn next to our lightning round of news updates. One, the City Council must now appoint a replacement for Mr. Kennedy's District 3 seat by October 4th. That term ends December 12th, so the Council must reappoint his replacement within 75 days after that date because Kennedy was re-elected in June to serve another term. The council will meet with court, county, and election officials in the coming weeks to determine whether the city can hold an election for that second appointment in the November 8th election this year, or a special election after that, so that District 3 voters have a say. District 3 residents can submit applications from August 18th to September 8th to be considered as Kennedy's initial replacement through December 12th. The City Council will then conduct interviews and make a decision in mid to late September. Two, the City Council approved resolutions affirming that the rent control measure has qualified for the November 2022 general election ballot. Officially called the Pasadena Fair and Equitable Housing Charter Amendment, it would cap annual rent increases at 2 to 3 percent annually and limit evictions to just causes only if approved by voters. The Council also voted to remain neutral on the measure. Meanwhile, State Senator Anthony Portentino Senate Bill 1177, which creates a $23 million affordable housing regional trust between Pasadena, Glendale, and Burbank, has been approved by the state legislature and is headed to Go Governor Newsom for his signature. Three, interim city manager C Cynthia Kurtz said the administrative review of the August 2020 shooting of Anthony McLean by a Pasadena police officer, which was expected to conclude in July, is ongoing. Meanwhile, the City Council approved more than $600,000 in grant funds for the police department to purchase anti-vehicle barriers, automatic license plate readers, and an infrared camera system for a helicopter. Four, last month, the Pasadena Public Health Department determined that an indoor mask mandate is not necessary at this time because local COVID cases had declined for 10 days and hospitalization rates did not increase. However, COVID cases do remain relatively high in LA County. So masks indoors are still highly recommended to protect yourself and those around you. The best tool we have, of course, is to get vaccinated. And 93.3% of Pasadenans are fully vaccinated. This fall, a booster related to the Omicron BA5 variant is expected to be released in September. After that, along with kids now being able to get vaccinated and barring any new variants, we may finally be able to move past this thing soon. Five, the seismic retrofit of the Pasadena Central Library could cost more than $120 million. The Public Works Department is conducting additional engineering work to determine the level and type of seismic work needed to renovate the building. A contract for the final design of the project will be brought to the City Council for consideration this fall. The City has also established a Central Library Programming Committee composed of community representatives to provide recommendations on how the Central Library space can be reimagined. Six, while the Pasadena City Council election is settled, the PUSD Board of Education election continues, although the nominating period closed August 12th. Nine candidates have qualified for four seats. In District 1, incumbent Kim Kenny and challengers Rita Miller, a teacher, and Altadena Town Councilman Billy Malone have qualified for the ballot. In District 3, incumbent Michelle Richardson Bailey and challenger Patrick Amsbury, an entrepreneur, have qualified. In District 5, where Board President Dr. Elizabeth Pomeroy is retiring, educator and community advocate Patrice Marshall McKenzie and retired Director of Special Projects at POSD Zillian Stammer have qualified for the ballot. And in District 7, where incumbent Scott Phelps is retiring, University Professor Dr. Yarma Velazquez and Attorney Juan Pablo Alban have qualified. 7. Some PCC faculty are considering dissolving the college's independent faculty association because they were unhappy with how the association handled the showdown with PCC's administration over ending COVID-19 distance learning earlier this year. And they also want better contracts, representation, and working conditions. In July, a decertification petition was filed with the Public Employment Relations Board, so the matter could come up for a vote soon. If dissolution is approved, PCC faculty could join a statewide union organization such as the California Federation of Teachers, which is the union that Art Center faculty joined in June. Eight, the city council voted to increase and extend a contract with consultant firm Point through July 31st to support the city through the post-relinquishment process of the 710 stub lane. The state 
relinquished 50 acres to the city of Pasadena in June and paid the city $5 million this month. A number of transitional traffic mobility projects for the 710 corridor proposed by the city are now receiving public input and will go to the Transportation Advisory Commission and to City Council in September. The Council will also consider establishing one task force to address land use and planning aspects of the 710 stub project and a separate task force to help guide the work related to communities that were displaced when Caltrans originally built the freeway decades ago. Nine, the Rose Bowl Stadium celebrated its centennial this month and raised $2.1 million from 1,200 attendees for the upkeep and modernization of the stadium, on top of the $40 million raised by the Rose Bowl Legacy Foundation. The event also raised more than $500,000 for the construction of a new Rose Bowl sign. The City Council recently approved plans for the Rose Bowl Operating Company to explore potential revenue opportunities to ensure the economic viability of the stadium and the Brookside Golf Course. And 10. Monkeypox has been confirmed in four Pasadena residents, according to the Pasadena Public Health Department. Learn more about how to protect yourself at cityofpasadena.net slash public dash health slash monkeypox. Let's patch in our guest, Pasadena Mayor Victor Gordo. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Justin. It's good to be back. Victor Gordo was elected mayor of Pasadena in 2020. Before that, he was the elected representative of District 5 on the Pasadena City Council starting in 2001. He previously served as Council Member Bill Crowfoot's field representative while attending night classes at the University of Laverne College of Law. He also worked as a program director for Pasadena's Day One Community Partnership, and he currently serves as the business manager and attorney for the Laborers International Union of North America Local 777. So, Mayor Gordo, uh, first, I'd like to get your reflections on Council Member John Kennedy. Well, what is his legacy and what did he mean to this community? You know, I, I, John uh, meant a great deal uh, to this community. As you know, he's a, a native Pasadena, attended local schools, um, became involved at a very young age in the community um, in various roles. Uh, I've known John since my early 20s. Uh, when I was, as you mentioned, working at day one, a local nonprofit, uh, and John was then uh, in his um, late twenties working with the NAACP, and so you know our history together uh, tracks very similarly, and uh, and came together again uh, as members of the Pasadena City Council. So he he cared greatly for this community, uh, cared greatly for the people of this community, uh, and dedicated his life to, to improving this community. Um, you know, his legacy is a combination of uh, a willingness to debate issues, stand his ground uh, on issues that uh, he believed in very strongly, uh, and the, our community's better for it. Uh, I was often on the other side of those debates and have to admit that, you know, John uh, carried the day as he should have on many of the issues that we debated. Um, and the result is a better decision making uh, at the city council level uh, and uh, ultimately a better outcome for the community. Um, and so, you know, while our hearts are heavy uh, because we've lost uh, a leader uh, in John and a friend, a neighbor, uh, a colleague. Um, we also have to keep in mind the great contributions and successes that John delivered, not just on, be, on behalf of District 3 residents, but for the entire city of Pasadena. Uh, and so, sure, you know, we, we mourn, but I also want to remind people that his legacy and contributions uh, should be celebrated and remembered. And, and what is the process to to fill his now vacant council seat? Where do we stand in that process? Will the council appoint uh, uh, someone twice or will a special election be called? Well, you know, that's that's a very timely question. We, we that was our latest debate on Monday evening. Uh, the staff uh, and the city attorney and outside council are advising that we have to appoint twice. There's the you know, John. Uh, was completing his most current term um, that is finished uh, in December of this year. 
uh, and that would be the end of his uh, four-year term, um, second four-year term. Uh, but he also won the uh, primary in the primary election uh, a third term that was to start in December of 2022. Uh, and so the city attorney has advised that that creates two vacancies, one for the term that was ending and then one for the new term that is to commence. Um, one question that has been asked by colleagues um, is, should we uh, instead schedule an, an election? Um, and the answer that's come back from the city attorney is, you know, we don't have the authority to do so. We're bound by the current language in the charter, which says um, one thing. Um, and essentially we appoint if there's a vacancy mm -hmm. uh, and that together with the elect the california elections code and case law um, leads me to believe uh, to get and the staff and the city attorney that uh, we have to appoint uh, I, I i like my colleagues would prefer an election uh, because it's the you know it's part of our democratic process it's how i came to sit in this office <laughs> um, and we should always when we can um, give effect to the democratic process uh, in this case uh, the voters themselves through the charter and the elections code um, I think uh, will uh, rule the day if you will and uh, and not give us the option for an election but that's still being um, revisited, we should have an answer soon. Pasadena seems to be in this, this period of uh, transition right now with city council elections recently resolved, the premature passing, of course, of Councilman Kennedy, the hiring of new city manager, M Miguel Marquez. What should the new city manager's priorities be in the in the short term? Well, the, the, the short term, you know, the, the city manager in Pasadena is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of every part of the city, with the exception of the city attorney and the city clerk. Uh, and so the first uh, role or first uh, um, order of business, I should say, for the city manager is to uh, understand clearly the day-to-day -day operations of the city, whether it be the police department, the fire department, the utility, uh, the health department, um, you know, the a, a public works. Uh, you have to keep in mind that uh, the city of Pasadena is in a billion dollar uh, operation. Uh, that's a lot of money uh, and it's a lot of responsibility. And so the first order of business is for the city manager to have a clear handle uh, on every aspect of the city's day to day business. Uh, and then begin the work of meeting with uh, members of the community, meeting with uh, members of the city council uh, to start looking at the future of Pasadena, to start looking at uh, some of our long-term goals, um, including important projects. Well, it's not even a project, including in important moments in time, such as the uh, 710 freeway uh -huh. uh, 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 stub uh, and reimagining that uh, portion of our city. Um, I say it's not a project because it's not a project. It's uh, it's a moment in time uh, that will never be repeated. Uh, and so we have to get it right. Uh, and that's going to mean a tremendous undertaking up on the part of uh, the city manager, the city council, um, uh, my in my capacity as mayor. Uh, I believe the community has an important role to play. It, there are a lot of interests that need to be balanced. And so in, in my view, um, that will be the second most important role for the city manager to play. What's your sense of what should go there in that land, the 710 stub, some open space, new affordable housing, some some retail? What's your sense of what should be there? Well, you know, that, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, you know, I've often heard it said, and we've all heard it said, that uh, the, the freeway stub is a gateway to beautiful neighborhoods neighborhoods in West Pasadena. And that it is. But I remind people, and I remind people during my campaign to, uh, to become mayor, that it's not just a, an important gateway to West Pasadena, uh, but it's an important gateway to 
to the east in our most his, our most important uh, historic and business district, Old Pasadena. Uh, it's also a, a uh, gateway for public safety to access uh, the hospital and for the public to access the hospital. And we have to keep that in mind. Uh, and then it's a gateway to the north. It's a transportation hub where the uh, 210, 134, 210 East and 210 West and the 134 merge. Uh, and we have to keep that in mind because it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's an important transportation um, uh, connector. Uh, and so all of those interests uh, and important gateways have to be balanced. Uh, and then we can reimagine different uses, um, you know, accommodation of open space, housing, retail, that will all have to be balanced uh, with the important gateways that I just described. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to take some reimagining, it's going to take some revisiting of what the area was. Um, but I also think it's an important opportunity not to necessarily recreate um, uh, you know, other parts of our city, but to reimagine this part of our city uh, and how it may uh, contribute to tomorrow's Pasadena. And on housing, uh, you recently recused yourself from the vote on whether to remain neutral on the, the upcoming rent control uh, measure. I'm, I'm assuming you're not, not able to comment on that, but feel free to do so. Um, but it, if voters reject that measure, what are some ways that we can make Pasadena a more affordable place to live? Well, you know, we, we recently, you know, I, I said during my campaign that one of the things I wanted to accomplish was to get us working with other cities. Uh, to construct more affordable housing as a region. One city can't not do it alone. Uh, we have to work in partnership with other cities. Uh, and we recently approved uh, uh, moving forward with a uh, housing trust fund with two of our neighboring cities, Burbank and Glendale. I think we need more of those partnerships with other cities uh, to the east of us um, uh, to partner up. And, and we actually are in a partnership with other cities to the uh, there is a trust fund uh, with other cities to the east of us, but we need more of those partnerships. Okay. Uh, and th those tr housing trust funds will be funded with state dollars. Uh, our cities can also contribute um, and we will construct more affordable housing working together as a region than we will as one city. And, uh, you know, the, the USS Pasadena, uh, uh, the, the, the Navy ship, is scheduled to be dismantled in 2025. Is there a campaign underway to, to uh, save that ship or maintain that ship? Interesting you should ask. Absolutely, there is. Um, and I'll announce it here for the first time on your show, uh, what I'm about to release uh, publicly tomorrow. Uh, I've uh, asked Bill Creeden, who's uh, head of the uh, USS Pasadena uh, Foundation uh, and former mayor Bill Paparian, uh, to head up that effort on my behalf uh, to gener generate the local momentum that's needed while I work with our congressional representatives and, and uh, in the United States Congress, as well as our Senate, uh, our United States Senators um, and the Secretary of the Navy uh, to make that a reality. Um, you should expect to see a letter issued this week um, and uh, uh, at requesting that the Secretary of the Navy uh, provide us an opportunity to sit down uh, and talk about that. That's an important part of history in Pasadena. This would be the fourth USS Pasadena uh, and we, we need to we need to have a, a role in that. Uh, we need our submarine. Uh, and we've done a good job of curating uh, the submarine uh, and its efforts, uh, raising funds. Uh, and so I'm proud that um, former Mayor Bill Paparian and Bill Creedon have accepted the challenge to assist me. Great, thank you for sharing that. Um, and uh, what is the status uh, of, on the process to hire a new police chief? Now that the city manager uh, is hired, that's the next big one. And does the criteria for that position include being open to working with the independent police auditor with the Civilian Police Oversight Commission? Absolutely. The, the process for the hiring of the new police chiefs 
is in the purview. Well, it's it started. The recruitment has started, uh, but the new city manager uh, will make the, the appointment, the decision. Uh, Cynthia Kurtz, who, by the way, we all owe a debt of gratitude to. Uh, she stepped in when we needed her most. But Cynthia Kurtz, our, our current city manager, and I um, made the decision that uh, she, as interim, should not make uh, permanent appointments, that those appointments, including the city manager, should be made by the future city manager uh, so that he can build his team. Great. Well, uh, Mayor Gordo, thank you so much for, for coming on the show and, and uh, talking about these important issues facing the city right now. I really appreciate you taking the time. Well, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm happy to come back uh, whenever I'm asked to, and uh, you do a good job of getting the news out there, and I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Take care. Take care. For this month's history segment, I thought I'd tell you a little bit more about John J. Kennedy's career. From a young age, he dedicated his life's work to serving others. Born and raised in Pasadena, he served as student body president at Blair High School and student senator at USC, where he received degrees in international relations and economics. He earned a JD from Howard University School of Law and was the youngest person to have served as president of the NAACP Pasadena chapter. He worked for the city of Pasadena in the finance, city attorney, police, and public works departments, and served on a number of boards. He ran his own management consulting business and worked at the LA Urban League, SoCal Edison, Countrywide Home Loans, and as deputy chief of police in Richmond, Virginia. He did a lot, and everyone knows his dedication to Pasadena. As his sister Lena recently said at a city council meeting, she hopes that John's memory inspires council members to consider those less fortunate in their deliberations and policy making. Thank you all so much for joining me for this episode of News Wrap Local. Tune in every third Friday of the month at 5 p.m. Learn more at PasadenaMedia.org and JustinDouglasChapman.com. Sign up for my monthly email newsletter to get updates on my work by visiting JustinChapman.substack.com. See you next month.